put together by our junior and senior churches to adult classes. The entire youth group acting as the worship and liturgy team has constructed the service. Our theme this year was self and sexuality. The readings for today's service are taken from the message, the, the message, the Bible in contemporary language. And the music has been selected by the group with assistance from our music director, Dr. Katona, and our based on these lessons. This service is a tribute to our classmates, Jordan Bailey, Brett Berry, and Sarah Squires, who are celebrities today. At this service, Jordan, Brett, and Sarah celebrate their next step on the journey to adulthood as young men and a woman with their right to team service, presented by the entire J2A. All of our J2A class knows they would not have made it to this special day without the light of Jesus shining through them and the love and support of their families. We invite the congregation to join, join with us in this, our 18th grade 13 service celebration. Get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. 
Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master. Cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be inventive in hospitality. The word of the Lord. Today is 139, which will read responsibly by the workers. God, investigate my life, get all the facts firsthand. I am the one who loves you, even from a distance, no matter what I You know when I leave and when I get back, I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I want to say before I start my first sentence. I look behind me and you're there, then up ahead and you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it all in. Is there any place I can go to avoid your spirit, to be out of your sight? If I go on to the side, you're there. If I go underground, you're there. If I flew on morning's wings to the far western horizon, you find me in a minute. You're already there waiting. Then I said to myself, Oh, he even sees me in the dark. At night, I'm immersed in the light. Oh yes, you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, my God, for your body and soul, and your arms to me. I worship in adoration, what a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly what I was made. You did what I did. How is the soul different from nothing to something? Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life were all prepared before I could even live one day. <coughs> A reading from the book of Matthew. Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. This is the most important, the first on your list. But there is a second to set alongside it. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law, the prophets hang true. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Just then, a religion scholar stood up with a question to test Jesus. Teacher, what do I need to do to get eternal life? He answered, what's written in God's law, how do you interpret it? He said that you love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and muscle and intelligence, and that you love your neighbor as well as you do yourself. Good answer, said Jesus, do it and you'll live. Looking for a loophole, he asked, and just how would you define neighbor? Jesus answered by telling a story. There was once a man traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. On the way, he was attacked by robbers. They took his clothes, beat him up, and went off, leaving him half dead. Luckily, a priest was on his way down the same road. But when he saw him, he angled across to the other side. Then a Levite religious man showed up. He also avoided the injured man. A Samaritan traveling the road came on him. When he saw the man's condition, his heart went out to him. He gave him first aid, disinfecting and bandaging his wounds. Then he lifted him onto his donkey, led him to an inn, and made him comfortable. In the morning, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take good care of him. If it costs any more, put it on my bill. I'll pay you on my way back. What do you think? Which of the three became a neighbor to the man attacked by robbers? The one who treated him kindly, the religion scholar responded. Jesus said, Go and do the same. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So firstly, we read Psalm 139. We can look deeper into this psalm by thinking about how God is with you wherever you go. This can help you build confidence because you are never truly alone. This song even states, if I rise on the wings 
of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. To me, this means that no matter how far you travel across the earth, God is always with you. This reminds me of when my family and I were gone on vacation. We were only going to Florida, but I was a little bit nervous. All of my life, I've only lived in New Jersey. It is very familiar and comfortable to me because Florida was not as comfortable to me because they have different rules and sometimes I tend to get worried and scared over nothing. But my family was with me and God was with me. This helped me feel more at home because I was with the people whom I loved and God was guiding me every step of the way. This applies to all of you as well. No matter where you go, God will be with you so there is no need to feel scared or alone. Small or large changes in our lives can cause us to feel overwhelmed and alone, such as going to a new school, getting a new job, getting married, having a baby, or moving to a new home. Or sometimes something completely unexpected happens. We can find peace in these somewhat overwhelming situations by keeping in mind that God is with us and he brings joy and light with him. When I was in fifth grade, my teachers were telling me about middle school. When they were telling me about it, I got, <laughs> I got scared. And I was scared of the assignments. I would get home from every subject. I was scared of going through school because I wasn't used to it. At, on the first day of school, I got a schedule which told me where to go, where I needed to go. Within the first two weeks of school, I got over being scared and loved it. I loved meeting new teachers and new friends from, uh, from the other three elementary schools. My teachers made everything okay. Everything I was scared of actually started in seventh grade. Every time I go down to the, into the basement at home, I get a little scared that, I'm, that I was going to see a spider. My basement doesn't have that many lights, so it's kind of dark. My basement is old, so oh, sometimes I want someone to go down there with me. One time I went down and, and I turned on the light and saw a spider five inches wide. <laughs> Every time I go down into the basement, I always tell myself the spiders aren't going to trouble me and that God's always with me. When I'm home alone in the day by myself, I'm not scared, but at night I am. I hear noises from the door like someone's going to break in. Other times it's just my brother. I get over it when my mom comes home. I would ask God to guide me and be there with me when I get scared. God does not want us to feel alone. We also read the Gospel of the Good Samaritan. In this gospel, we hear about God being with someone during a scary time. This passage tells us how God influences people to do good things. This is shown when God is trying to influence the expert in law to do what the Good Samaritan did. This gospel teaches us many things, as well as causing us to ask questions. One of the main things this teaches us is how God calls us to help people who feel alone even when it is not easy or convenient. One question that I have about this passage is why the priest or the Levite didn't stop to help the man. There is no direct answer to this question. Maybe they didn't think they had the time, or they were scared, or they thought they were better and more important than the man they saw suffering. It is very important to think about what the Samaritan did. What made the Samaritan different from the priest and the Levite was he took the time to help the man. He cleaned the man's wounds with oil and wine, bandaged him, took him to an inn and paid for him to stay there, and he was willing to pay for anything else the man needed. The Samaritan made the right decision. Jesus is trying to convince the expert in law to help others like the Good Samaritan did. This passage is calling out to us as well. God wants us to love our neighbors, and he is directing us to be like the Good Samaritan, just like he was directing the expert in law to do the same thing. In the story of the Good Samaritan, the traveler, the traveler was attacked by robbers. 
The man was sad and mad, and was lying half dead on the side of the road and fell alone. He was praying to God for help. He was happy when he saw the first person coming, but they walked by. He was sad again. He felt happy when the second person came along, but they walked by as well. He was disappointed. Then a third person came and put bandages, oil, and wine on his wounds and took him to a place where they took care of him. He was happy and relieved that somebody, someone actually helped him, and that would be that he would be okay. Amen. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered. Thank you. 
found him in the temple talking with the elders, they realized he was a child no longer. So these parents stand watching their sons and daughter grow beyond childhood. Let us pray for them. O oh God, bless Winsome, Richard, Jim, Dawn, Tracy, and Dan, the parents of these young men and women. Rejoice with them as their daughters become women and their sons become men. Strengthen them that they may support their sons and daughters as they begin the journey to adulthood. Uphold these parents by your spirit that they may comfort their children, although they can neither walk the road for them nor shield them from pain. Carry them all safely through this journey, so that one day they may stand together as adults and friends, a joy and comfort to each other all the days of their lives. Amen. Dear friends of Jordan, Brett, and Sarah, as they move beyond the circle of their family, they will need loyal friends. Will you stand by them, knowing that there may be times when your support means more than any other? As the living body of Christ, we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit to do God's work in the world. Will you, as a community of God, which spans the generations, share your knowledge and experience with these young persons as they become young men and women? We will God Will you guide, guard, and sustain them as they grow into the full stature of Christ? We will have been armed by Almighty God with both the imagination of childhood and the strength and creative power of adulthood. Now you must journey forth to gain the skills you will need to assume full responsibility as an adult. Yeah, it says you need it.
give us here in our chaplaincy a sense of expectation as we come and inspiration as we go. We pray for the Archbishop, Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop William, our priest Karen and Jacob, our Deacon Hank, our seminary and Catherine, Brother John, Aspen Drolin, and Carol Rogers. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Creator God, the world so often seems to be violent and fearful place. Give us the strength to love our enemies and pray for those who, by violence and acts of terrorism, distort and demonize your wonderful creation. We pray especially for those affected by gun violence and for peace in the Middle East and Korea. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, may our closeness to our family and friends make us never exclusive, shutting others out, but always inclusive, welcoming others. Encourage us in outgoing hospitality and keep us from becoming possessive with those we love. We remember with Thanksgiving the birthdays of Tim Dow, Bobby Gardino, Lana Scarchiapone, Phyllis Robinson, Ashley Estadio, Kristen Jacober, Cynthia Smith, Tracy Mesker, and Skip Reader. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, help us, help us all to be a part of the healing ministry of your church. Encourage us to constantly pray for those who we know who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. Deepen our love for our neighbors, especially those who are weak. Help us to console the sorrowful and give hope to the dying. We pray, we pray especially for George, Ruth, Enid, Judy, Tom, Karen, <coughs> Michael, Don, Lugis, Nora, Gabriel, Adrian, Cameron, Tappan, Barbara, Elf, Mary, Ken, Peter, Bo, Jack, Meredith, Yvonne, Teresa, Sharon, Ed, Charles, Tracy, Sherry, Jasmine, Dudley, Alyssa, um, Debbie, Alice, Susan, <coughs> Chris, Omar, Harry, Jane, Ron, Sue, Shannon, Betty, Talon, Regina, <coughs> Angela, Robin, Bliss, Steve, Cindy, Russ, Alicia, Grant, Carol, Margaret, Marion, Kathy, Steve, Louis, Diana, Ezra, Raphael, Mar Maria, Bill, Connie, the Bucko and Hager families, and those you wish to remember at this time. Will, Allison, Tommy, Foster, Leslie. We pray also for those in the armed forces, all the first responders, and all those who work for justice and peace, especially James, Donald, Carol, Joseph, Dave, Gregory, James, Sam, Corbin, Michael, Ken, Trevor, and Grace. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, your love reaches beyond the grave. At the end of our days on earth, be with us and with those we love and with those whom we love and have gone before us. We pray now for those who have recently died. Give to the departed the perfect joy of your eternal love and, those, and to those bereaved by their passing the consolation of your perfect love. We pray today especially for Hannah Rack in celebration of whose 12th birthday the sanctuary flowers have been given. We remember in prayer today Larry and Peggy Rack in the, whose memory the sanctuary candle burns. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, send us out into the world today, mindful that as witnesses and servants, you should make you known in every place we visit and bear witness to the gospel with acts of faith and hope and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so um, today's gospel reading was...
was about something called the Good Samaritan. Have you guys ever heard of that? No? No, all right. So, <laughs> Good Samaritan, basically. Uh, there's a man, okay? He's traveling down a road, right? And he gets attacked. He's attacked by robbers, right? So they leave him there, and this man, this man needs help, right? And lucky for him, a priest is coming down the road. And the priest sees him, and then the priest ignores him, right? Yeah, so he still, he still needs help. The priest passed him by. Luckily, there's another guy uh, called a Levite. He comes by. He also, he doesn't help him. He just passes right by and ignores him. And then um, one more guy comes by called a Samaritan. So the Samaritan, he sees him. And he feels really, really bad for the guy. So this Samaritan, he comes and he helps him and he treats his wounds and he brings him to an inn and he pays for everything this guy needs in the inn, right? All right, so out of all these three people who passed him by, two of them completely ignored him and one of them helped. So who do you think did the right thing? The priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? Are they yeah, yeah, the Samaritan did the right thing, because he was nice to him, right? Alright, so, so how would this look today? Because back then, being a priest and a Levite, they were pretty, they were pretty up there positions, right? So, who knows some really important jobs today, huh? Just call them out. Yeah, like a doctor, or police, yeah, police, nurse, businessman. Firemen, yeah. A teacher, yeah, all these important jobs. So these two people, really big members of the community, they've got big jobs, right? And then one person, one person just has an ordinary job. So what are some pretty ordinary jobs you know? Maybe waiter or waitress, cashier, maybe your janitor, secretary. Just a normal person, right? So you would expect that these big, these doctors, these scientists, these policemen, these firemen, they would stop to help. But they don't. It's the, it's the janitor or the waitress or the cashier that stops to help this guy. So anyone can help people, right? You just have to be kind and you just have to treat everybody like a neighbor. It doesn't matter what your position is, rich, poor, you get a good job or not. So, <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> you just have to treat everybody like your neighbor, right? Close my heart, but it fears and needs to know that the heart. 